against New York, actually, at the final, uh, last round. And yeah. going to a game here, finally. Yep, we're going to be into the draft. So UBC, it seems like winning a lot of games 2-1 like that, having never lost a game, but winning a lot of series 2-1s mean, means that I think UBC is going to have a better job adjusting if they are to lose the series. Whereas, yeah, kind of as you said, with McMaster, they've only lost Radiant the two games and it was a straight 0-2 shutout. Uh, does that mean that if things aren't going perfectly their way, they can't adjust very well? We're going to have to find out in mean, the games. That depends on the team, yeah. That depends on the team, right? Uh, you never know if these guys scream against other very formidable teams and know how to deal with that as well, right? And like it, and, and morale and stuff like that also really depends on like <laughs> the personalities of the players as well. If they have a good captain who can make you know good shot calls, keep their uh, players focused, maybe they even have a coach that can do that as well. You know, that that's what really matters, you know, just to keep the players from tilting once they lose yep um and going into the first waves of bands the visage ban is uh one that we're seeing a lot more frequently just because yeah it's actually is... kind of interesting i thought visage was a popular ban against ubc because i used to see visage ban yeah, on every single game time. against ubc but maybe mcmaster has an even better visage player yeah and visage himself as a hero is has gotten more popular and brings a lot to the table in the current meta um, just pushing and his ability to win his lane or be safe in his lane especially yep. Yep. definitely win his lane yeah he wins a lot of lanes it's, it's very hard to gank him as well because uh he maxes gravekeeper's cloak now so it's very hard to kill him and then he gets the grave chill as well to sap in your movement speed and attack speed so he Ooh, runs away this is someone yeah, who hasn't seen in a while. And Ors chases you down as well. Just get a like, gank, support ganking that lane, and Grave chills the target, and then they just dive him. Super easy. Both teams coming into this game with a plan in mind, Golgi. No time getting wasted at all. Um, Underlord, a very stable pick for UBC. We've talked about that to death. But the Shadow Demon, is he back, Golgi? Give me, give me your insight oh. on this. I don't know. I have not seen him in a very long time. Uh, usually, if I see Shadow Demon, you usually are expecting... Um, Either you're picking him as a counter or picking him as a synergy, right? Um, and the classic synergy with Shadow Demon is going to be a Luna. We'll see if they do decide to go for the Luna, but um, even if it isn't the Luna, there's plenty of other heroes that can pick for that. Even like making some AM illusions or making like illusions of a Radiance carrier as well can get Shadow Demon really far. Um, a lot of times you see Shadow Demon picked against like uh, heroes like AM as well to get uh, enemies AM clones or like enemies Radiance carriers and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he has been kind of out of meta for a while. Um, I'm not sure if he has been buffed. He must have been buffed in the last patch because he wasn't seeing any play. But yeah, I'm excited to see what this is going to be pulling off. Yeah, Spectre's back in a big way. So as you were talking about that Radiance carry, that's some something that could be in the pipe here for McMaster. And McMaster yeah. or UBC. Still, not, still not super sold on Spectre, although we did see yeah. him twice <laughs> in the last two series. And he but won like, both of them, didn't he? Them. Yeah, he did. He did. So, um, like, uh, now, I mean, we know Spectre is something to be considered at the very least, but, uh, yeah, still still very shaky on that. Um, because laning phase is so important in the meta, and Spectre basically loses your safe lane, um, almost always. And um, Pango, you see, get banned in UBC here, which is a very strong team fighting hero. And But a lot of the criticism I hear when it comes to what pro players say, like I was hearing listening to Winter talk about him during DAC, and he's saying uh, Pango is not a very good hero right now because his laning is actually very good. And laning is so Makes important sense. right Isn't... now. I thought, I thought he was typically a pretty strong laner. Um, is he has no way to really sustain himself, or oh, or, like, yeah. or be able to. He can't kind of farm jungle either if he gets forced out of the lane either. You know, without some levels. So like that's that's his problem. Or a heavy spell investment, and he'll run out of exactly, uh, yeah. mana very quickly. Yeah, he can't keep himself safe because uh, Swashbuckle is a, such a good spell, but like that's all he has. It's, it's like same as like Windrunner off lane, you know? Like Windrunner off lane can keep herself very safe, but like she has a very little way of getting back into the game without yeah. you know, getting some levels done in the uh, lane itself. All right, so UBC gonna pick themselves up a Slardar. They've got some good, they've got some good fighting potential here. Underlord and Slardar, defensive potential on the Shadow Demon. Roche with that corrosive Radiant haze. Team. The only thing they're really missing is some uh, some push here, right? Luna was a good option for that, yeah. but McMaster obviously took that right away. Uh, Life Stealer can do some yeah. okay uh, tower damage as well, can sustain under it. 
I mean, life's a little slaughter. This is a classic. I feel like I'm watching like a game from like a year and a half ago, back when Shadow <laughs> Demon Luna was everywhere and life's yeah, a little slaughter was everywhere as well. Um, this kind of feels like that kind of old days. Um, yeah, Luna picked by uh, McMaster is a very good pick. Um, not against the Shadow Demon per se, but it's like a pick to ban out to Luna. Yep. Um, and but of course you gotta not... watch out because Shadow Demon would love to make clones of her. Yeah. And you're not pigeonholing yourself as much as you might with someone like a, huff, you know, trying to do that. Oh, they have a d dazzle. Do we pick the Huskar? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's like well suicidal. Yeah, no, for sure. But UBC is still no one to really synergize as um, naturally with Shadow Demon. Actually, Life Sealer could go for the Radiance build. Um, that Shadow Demon can farm the jungle with Life Sealer clones if they want to give Shadow Demon the, that kind of farm that is. Usually you won't do that with your opponent's uh, Radiance Carriers, though. Yeah. Um, McMaster taking a long time here. They've got... They're looking for their offlaner and probably a roamer here. Um, Venge is on the table. Okay, Sand King. Classic. Thank Classic you, stuff. Yeah. It's a great common and shader because we want to always have the initiation in the Slardar. Um, but Life Slur doesn't mind Sand King at all, though. Now they've got um, Ten seconds, really. got a Death Prophet who's all right and kind of gets in your face. Sand King for for the ganks, Witch Doctor for Sustain. Do you feel like back. Luna is is sitting pretty comfortable here on McMaster, or is there still kind of one more hero that that needs to really round this team out in their off lane? And love, what's available? I mean, I would love to have some kind of save here for McMaster, which is what they're kind of lacking here, because Slardar Life Stealer is such a deadly combo Ten to almost any hero in the game, unless you have some way to save your carry that gets jumped on. Um, but with the Witch Doctor and Sand King being picked up, and like OD not being out of, not being in the pool because wow, Death Prophet got picked as a mid laner, yep. um, I'm not sure exactly what's available. Because like OD would be very nice here. Yeah, they're looking for. An off laner who can provide some kind of defensive capabilities. Um, Abaddon? Oh, that was banned, that was actually. Yeah, oh, yeah, he is banned. Yeah, but it got banned. You can purge Five off the uh, Chorus of Haze and the stun with the Aphotic Shield. Uh, but yeah, Abaddon, unfortunately, not in the pool right now. There's not a lot that ticks all the Omni Knight is also banned as well. Ooh, yeah. All these savey offlaners are banned. So, hopefully, I'll right. Okay, that's good. Go for the that's counter, good. That's counter initiate. Yeah, that's great. Um, Life still jumps out of Luna, and obviously, he rages up, and then he's pretty safe usually, but Batrider comes and snatches him away. And yeah, he's going to need some reaction speed, but that's not should be a problem here in the top eight at all. So, Batrider should be able to put a stop to that plan. And now it's time for UBC to beat up that mid lane with their next pick. They've, uh,. I don't think they're go need to go for it, but they've still got Queen of Pain is a staple mid laner here. Also provides yep. additional mobility with the life stealer. Yeah. Or for the. But life I'm stealer. not sure if I would want to play Queen of Pain against this lineup because Death Prophet sanking about right all of them that can give uh, Queen of Pain some trouble. Yeah. I mean, uh... yeah, whoever their mid laner is, they're gonna get they're. They've got great possibilities to get jumped on, right? Um, yeah. They got a lot of time still left. Uh, I'm thinking... I'm still thinking about the Shadow Demon. I'm, I'm still thinking if there if there's any mid laner that can um, kind of combo with the Shadow Demon. But nothing's really coming to my mind. Yeah, none of the really big boys. Yeah, Gyrocopter's out of pool as well. And even then, he's not the greatest, right? Like, he depends no. a lot on his flat cannon. Yeah. But it's like range carries are good to have illusions. Sniper? Sniper's okay. But he's gonna, he has kind of the same problem. He can get jumped on more than any of, like, if, if yeah, you think of a mid laner that gets, it, yeah. Cover. So, yeah, Viper's okay. No, uh, Sniper. Oh. Is what I was, is that what I said? Sniper, Snipey oh. Sniper. But um, yeah, he has that problem of like Sniper if I think of a if I have if I think of a mid laner that gets jumped on and died though it's Sniper. Yeah, but they do have the Shadow Demon save, right? That is true. That's the interesting thing about um uh, Batrider versus Life Stealer. When Batrider last with Life Stealer on the rage, Shadow Demon can't save the Life Stealer with uh, imprisonment. But although if Shadow Demon has a range to get the Batrider himself, then it shouldn't be a problem. 
But yeah, Viper, I mean, if they just you, wanna... She's just gonna use... Oh boy. Oh, okay, well, there it is, there, there it is. That's, that's great. That's yeah, the that's one great. that uh, boxes. Yep, it works with Shadow Demon. It uh, can survive ganks if uh, obviously get some help from the team. Um, yeah, yeah. No, actually, it's a great pick. All right, all right. UBC putting that uh, putting that reserve time to very good use. Coming up with that Deucer yeah. pick. Yeah, of course, Deucer usually is very weak against a bad rider. Um, can be, but I think uh, Kubi on the Shadow Demon is going to be very helpful with that. And they don't have any kind of mana burn. Luna does have the option. Manta, Manta Diffusal would be pretty nah. good to tear up the Medusa, but you think still yeah, no? Diffusal on a range hero. Yeah, Diffusal on a range hero is a brain. Correct, correct, true as well. It's so okay, they're just going to need to brute yeah. force her. That's, that's their option for this Medusa, is brute force. Uh, Death yep. Prophet does have silences and stuff, so they, when, they're gank, when they are ganking her, um, they can make sure she doesn't try to get that counter Stone Gaze off. Yeah, it's going to be, I think, catching uh, Ku Shadow Demon more than anything, honestly. Because if you don't catch the Shadow Demon the first, that will save uh, Medusa. You don't want to be wasting your lasso like that, right? Yeah. Ku's going to pick up like a Force Staff, uh, like ASAP here, and like an Ether Lens. I think it would be good as well. So this is really uh, McMaster's game to win before that Medusa becomes a problem, right? Yeah, it's how usually Medusa play will go. But then again, they do have a Luna. Who is okay in the late game, but I don't think is as powerful as Medusa. Obviously, yeah. it seems like every every Medusa that we've seen in CSL, um, as you, like as soon as you said they need to target the Shadow Demon first, like every CSL Medusa that I've seen is always the last one standing and then just wins the fight, like kills five people. Yeah, I mean Medusa kind of only swings one way, right? She either destroys the enemy team or she's just completely useless in the game. All right, so it so, yeah, looks we'll like it's going to be UBC here on the Radiant are smoked out. Looking like they want to go for yeah, something here. They might find Who's leaned away with the disruption. Oh, but Ku gets seen and he doesn't have the disruption in range. He's getting pretty close, but high end will be able to make it out of there. Now they're turning around into a fight. Oh, UBC could be getting swarmed right now. No, Ku is the first one in. Here comes the coconut. Yes, they're going to have a burrow strike there as well. Keep him in place. Ku, the first one to go down. First blood going over to McMaster. You want yeah, a five? A we also know how to five. Man, there's a lot of like, silver uh, ranked heroes here over on uh, McMaster already. Yikes, a silver Luna and a high end already a silver Death Prophet. Been grinding on these heroes. That's one of the cool things about Dota Plus, you can tell which heroes that these will practice a lot. Yeah. Alright, looks like Ooh, McMaster's gonna get a three rune start. Yeah. These runes are of course worth 200 gold now, so it's very nice to have. And yeah, that They're paying dearly for the first blood. Not only losing the first blood, but also losing that 200 bounty rune. Yeah. Luki Luki went and took the bounty on the top, but he's rotating around to the bottom. I can't tell what's going on here. Are they playing five man mid? No, but I think... All five heroes are near the mid right now on one side or the other. Yeah, lane it's swap? These... Yeah, these teams are lane swapping each other over and over again, basically. They won't get the favorable matchups against each other because um, Lifestealer desperately wants to play against Batrider because Batrider can't do anything in Lifestealer. You like get sticky nape palm stacks on him, he just rages it off. It's a waste of mana. And uh, Lifestealer has like, you know, a, um, a wand and he just gets it all like held the mana back. Um, but it looks like McMaster is the one that's going to come out on top here in this like uh, rotation war because they're going to get the Batrider versus Underlord matchup, which uh, McMaster is going to be very happy with. Yeah, unless unless UBC tries to rotate it again, but at this point McMaster has saved all their TPs for that exact thing. Uh, so they'll yeah. just be able to reply right away. Yeah, there's like not much the Underworld can do. Yeah, again, Life Solar is going to start TPing bottom here, but as you said, we might be seeing um, a TP response here from McMaster. But Life Solar can like 1v1 Batrider no problem as well. But Batrider again, yep, yep TPs are to already off. out. Goodbye. Yep. This is what happens if you get out rotated on during the early game. Uh, McMaster had the call, they knew this was happening. 
And um, yeah, you can try TP to adjust, but the thing is, the, uh, the team that gets it right in the first time is will be able to respond. Ooh, they're still gonna take a couple coconut shots. Just a little bit of damage. They've got Ku here. It's a banish out on Venar, but they'll be back. Back they go. Now up, this is what you were talking about. Oh, up, yeah. a little bit of Seven trouble stops. here. He's gonna drop Firestorm. Luki Luki's about to take a ton of damage from the tower, but he will be able to burn down up in time before he goes down. It's gonna be a trade, but he is happy with that trade. Yep, that, that lane is absolutely undoable for Underlord there. That would love to have Life Stealer there. But McMaster off to a very fantastic start here. Gain the first blood, triple bounty runes, and out rotating UBC so far. Mid lane is literally uh, even right now, 12 to 12 to 2. I shouldn't be seeing too much happen here in the mid lane. Uh, Medusa doesn't have much kill potential, obviously. If at all, Death Prophet might be the one that kills Medusa, but that would be hard to do as well. What's going on here in the bottom? Yikes. Oh, looks like he's pulling his lane. Or just grab the. Uh... Grab the keep, creeps from under the tower, grab a couple hits, and pull them back to lane. So this should secure it pushing uh, in McMaster's favor. As long as they... never mind. Uh, in the mid, studying is going to rotate there with Big Bun Theory. Yeah, so that's going to be a um, haste rune on Slardar. They're getting the kill on high end. That will that's solve that Slardar problem where he can't... it's hard to close that gap in the early game. Yeah, he's level three already, and that's uh, that's so uh, you're pretty happy once you hit level three, I think, in the Slardar. You can start doing a lot more there. And he has the tranquil boots already. Falling by banishment. Yeah, he's got a banishment out on the nice now. Oh, nice is gonna take the crush, and they will get themselves one noise tank. Now Vinar is gonna have to burrow strike away, but studying is coming in. He will be able to make it. Yeah, UBC pulling it right back here. The Slardar is going to be very scary, especially off to a good start. And uh, if you can get a Blink Dagger soon here, um, no one over on the side of McMaster is going to be safe. But then again, the top lane, the Batrider doing incredibly well himself as well. How is that going right now? Up, he just has the one death still, right? Yeah. Luki Luki should be able to put the gain on him pretty good there. The actual up actually is, is up. Yeah, top lane actually up is getting a run down. Not much up will be able to do about this. It's, it's so painful this lane because it's not like he's gonna get early pit oh, levels. The river and the bot, Vinar. Yeah, he does. He finds the Sand King. Sand King's gonna be able to burrow strike out. Studying? Going under the tower of Vinar, he already used the burrow strike setting, taking a lot of damage. Noise is going to be there with the coconut. A couple more shots, he oh. gets the crush. He still needs more damage. They still need more damage. McMaster, is he going to get away? Yes, one more shot. No, he will not get away. High end, going to be able to get that. That was like the Bot last lane. chance that they had. Yikes is in the secret shop right now. The side shop making her way away has that uh, magic wand. Running, yes, should just be fine. A little bit more poison. Oh no, Shiniba. Oh. Uh, one more shot. Yikes, he's through the trees and safe under his own tower. God, I think she was dead to rights there, but she has so many stacks in the magic one thanks to all those um, poison. the poisons, shadow poison. Oh, Actually, yikes. Yikes. yeah, open wounds gonna get used. Shiniba has to use the beam, but will be able to get himself, get himself a little distance. Back under the tower. Yikes! Do you got any any support to share a salve with you? You just gotta tangle this up. <laughs> I think Shinibaba could have went for that kill, but I think Shinibaba miscalculated his mana because if he had the rage there, Yikes was dead. Unfortunately, out of mana, had to not get away. Right, Luki, Luki looks like he just no, he didn't shrine. He's just headed up now to give luck, uh, give up a little bit of pre of pressure. Back to the lane, he shall go. Got rotations coming in from Medusa, studying and co. Where are they gonna find? They found Yikes in the jungle banishment. They get a bro strike out on the Slardar, but they've got to be careful. Oh no, Luna not standing a chance. They brought the whole team, just about. 
Yeah, it's a classic bait. Uh, you pull the lane, forces the uh, off laner to uh, adjust to your pull, and then when that happens, you get your entire team in there and then gank the person who's on opposition. Shadow Demon showing up in the mid. Just backed up. Looky Looky, once again, he's put the pressure on the up. He's got himself some stacks, some flame breaks. He does not have a Firefly for another five seconds, but he has a Mango if he feels like he can go for this kill. And I think he just might. No, he's going to go for it with right clicks. No, there it is. The Firefly into the Crush. Studying will be able to get him. Looky Looky taking a ton of damage. This Slardar is having an okay time at the cost of a little bit of his team. Meanwhile, Ku is now looking for someone else. They already used all of their stuns, so Ku immediately is going to TP out and make it home. Yeah, these two blink carriers are going to get their blink up pretty early here. Bat Rider and the Slardar. The Molly kills are getting. Should have uh, forced to rage away from the bot lane. Bat Rider's back in top. Let's see what he's going to come up with here. Just as Underlord walks to lane. It'll be a little sad there. But not not a high octane laning phase. Both teams playing it very cool, very calm, getting the kills where they can, but not pressure, not pressing for anything uh, that isn't going to be guaranteed or at least pretty easy. Uh, so both yeah, ganks are coming out due to mostly ganks, uh, except the top lane. Obviously, Luke, you look just kind of run the thing over up. Yep, we got Malik on the Shiniba. He's going to be able to infest oh, up, up into the creep. Up again. Up is getting lassoed. Lassoed onto the fire. Now, we got rotations coming in. Studying and Ku. There goes Shinaba. He's going to pop out of the creep, but that is just enough to force McMaster out of here. UBC won't go for it. As he said, they're, they're, both, they're both going for sure things, it feels like. Yeah. Has there even been any failed gank attempt? I guess there was that one escape from Yikes. Here in the side shop, but that's really all I can think Radiant's of. Top tower is under attack. Yeah, every every um one else. Yeah, it seems like the gangs have been quite successful. The only real big difference here is the, obviously the off lane here between the underlord and the bat rider. I mean that's uh, the only difference factor that's uh, keeping MacMaster uh, basically even here because otherwise the gangs has been more over on the UBC side. Up tries to go for a, a steal on some of the creeps with the firestorm, but Looky Looky doing just a little Radiant's bit more damage there. Oh, I actually might get again. Has to be careful, yeah. TP's there. We go. Shadow Demon's coming in. Studying is here. Looky Looky, he's in the trees, but he's got no firefly for ten seconds. Now they've got a pit of malice. They've got everything. So he's gonna go down, but he created a lot of space in favor for it. Let's see what the other team is using with it. They're going down on Big Bun Theory in the mid. We'll use that Stone Gaze and be able to escape. But they will be able to get some damage to the tower with this first Nexus this is the game. Not a ton, but they're at least doing something with that space. I think if High End landed that final Crypt Swarm over on Big Bun Theory, uh, that Maledict Tick might have to take it down. It was a close one, definitely. Let's see here, Luna's TP into the top. Oh, she got free and clear lanes here. She is very happy to come soak this up. Uh, looking at the net worth, how are they coming along? Batrider, yeah, he's top in net worth. He can go farm jungle creeps. He can show up in any lane that he wants, just about. Uh, so he's gonna give yeah, some hundred gold away from here. Blink. My gosh, how's Slardar doing? Uh, he's working on it. Not too, not too far for him. Three hundred or four hundred gold. Yeah, he is obviously the poison four, so he doesn't have as much farm priority. But as a poison four, having uh, being that close to Blink Dagger at eleven minutes is pretty good. I would say it's outstanding. All right, Venari. He sandstormed up in the bottom lane. Are they looking to do a gank here onto? On the life stealer, they brought themselves Luki Luki. We will be able yeah. to time out that Ooh, raid. He just got the blink dagger. Ooh. Here we and go. He has a lasso. I don't I feel like they want to bait out the rage, right? Or else oh, they might not be able to Baba knows something's up. 
Oh, Luki yep. Luki's gonna use the Firefly as well. Go for Life Stealer, but he's not even here anymore. Life Stealer's hold up in the mid with the rest of UBC. Looking like they want to go on high end. Yeah, very well done by Shinibaba with that kind of uh, sixth sense there. Just sniffing that out. Yeah, I mean, he did know that uh, that Batrider was in the lane, so he was like, nah, this just seems not Yeah, must have suspected that Blink Dagger was near because, they, I mean, everyone knows this Batrider is doing incredibly well. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Shinibaba, well, force in jungle for now. Oh, Vinark is gonna go on to Ku, gets the Burnside Cord and the Epicenter, <laughs> putting out so much damage. And that will be an easy kill. Not on a big person, but it's better than holding that Epi. Yeah, but that is the Blink uh, reveal by Loki Loki. Although I'm pretty sure UBC already knew that Loki Loki had a Blink Dagger anyways, even if he didn't reveal it. Yeah. Oh. And the bot lane tower is gonna go down. Loki Loki even gets the last hit on that as well. Again, the extra 200 gold pocketed for himself. Meanwhile, studying uh, about 200 gold away from his own Blink Dagger, and once that comes on, I think that's when UBC's time to shine. Because uh, there's very few people that can stand up to that gank. And Slaughter also level 7 as well, so he got that course of St. Hayes and max level Slytherin Crush. Yeah, he's having a great time. This is one of those things with Slaughter. It's one of those heroes that we see, if he doesn't start out pretty great, he kind of just ends up being a non-factor. Okay, so on bot lane, uh, Lucky Look and Noise use the smoke in the uh, Radiant Jungle, but Lifestealer was farming a camp right under them and just immediately broke the smoke. So just a waste of smoke over on McMaster. They must have thought someone was invisible on top of them. Cohen Study and gonna follow up with the smoke of their own, headed to the mid. Exorcism also used in the mid lane as well, high end. Luki Luki, oh, he's gonna get the lasso out onto Medusa. Medusa now taking a bit of damage. Bro Strike gonna keep her in space for a little bit longer. Up has got the Dark Rift going. He actually oh, cancels no. it. No, Why? he cancels it because they're turning around. I think they felt like they could turn it around. Now they're losing Studying no. as well. Three, four of them down. UBC is gonna take the first big loss of the game. High end even surviving the tower shot. And it's going to heal up to full here as the exorcism ends in just a moment. That was a disastrous <laughs> a defense there from UBC. Yeah, not even the, that Prophet Gwinnah. Having survived that with 20 HP, that's crazy. Oh man, this is not up's game right now. That cancel on the Dark Rift was just wrong. Just, just flat out wrong. I, I think it, I figured he, he timed it. He did it perfectly. Like, it was a very obvious, we're getting you out of here. And I think the call from the captain was just, no, fight, fight, fight. We can we can right. turn this around. Um, they figured maybe they could save Medusa or something like that. But Medusa is not really, not at that point, right? That that you save Medusa and keep her in a fight. She's getting yeah, she can't turn just get her around. out of there. Yeah. They could have saved her as well. The Dark Rift was uh, just about to end. And then Medusa like, lived like couple more seconds even after it was cancelled so yeah just a little bit tragic but that's a wrong call there yeah as you said maybe not it's not even up fault maybe whoever is making the uh, shot calls here on UBC kind of fudge that one up going a small pause here looks like uh, we have a little bit of connection issue over on high end side uh, he did pick up his jewels already 15 minutes in on that profit is very happy about that Batrider is still talking on uh, net worth here, 7.4k, and he even got the last hit on the both mid and bot tower. So yeah, he's very very rich. Yeah, um, there's something Mickey coming over on the curve like this. It's going to be four staff. Oh my goodness, this Batrider has four <laughs> staff, blink dagger, 15, at, minutes. Uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, now as far as uh, core for core, the Medusa 500 above the Luna right now, uh, but Luna. Is not going for the Mask of Madness, just holding the Morbid Mask right now. Um, so she won't have that, but we'll be finishing off a... Oh, actually, is she getting... She's got a, um, a Helmadom, right? Uh, who? Uh, yikes, Luna. Uh, I don't think he has a Helm of Dominant right now, or he's he, he saying he's actually getting the Oh, no, okay. No, no what's... He's got a quarter staff in his inventory. Is that just... What is that going towards? Sir, what in whose inventory? A quarter staff. Oh no, okay, sorry, it is the Mask of Madness, of course. Da, 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 da. Yeah, quarter staff yeah is, she uh, she is going the Mask of Madness, excuse me. Yeah. And in fact has it purchased and will be delivered out to her very soon, I think. So she'll be farming up with that. 
is going to be a on pause here. Oh, it's going to be crushed in the mid lane. That's a blink reveal. Yeah, Noise gets turned around on. He tries to show up. Oh, Batrider, he's seeping in, but knows he can't stay here. Cancels that TP very wisely. Uh, and that is going to be you see hitting kill. straight back for a tier one tower of their own. So during the pause, um, the players were talking that uh, they weren't, they were never gonna lasso Big Bun Theory again if they didn't take the towers. But since they did take the tower, it's like the lasso's back on the menu Radiant's for them to do so. They tried to go for Luki Luki, but Luki Luki sent something was up and just fire flied his butt out of there. Yeah. Fire flew his butt out of there. I guess would be the proper tense. Looky looky with the four stuff now in his uh, inventory is going to be very hard to catch and he's going to have no time catching opponent. Actually getting pinging out Shinibaba in the top lane as well. He's gonna, he's gonna throw some uh there we go. He forces out the rage and there it goes right into the lasso. Here comes high end. High end has got the exorcism running. Now Luki Luki's gonna be able to jump on him. Vinar's trying to get in range for that burrow strike, and there he goes, he will. They find themselves the life stealer. And another dark rift from up should be able to get his team oh, out no. of there. There we go. Oh noise comes in at the last minute. Just, you know, you gotta keep you gotta keep channeling it no matter what. <laughs> you gotta dance, man. I am not willing to transition this into a push because they don't want to just waste the Of course they got Shinibaba with it actually, that's not a waste at all. And they just made it out of fortification as well. Yep. But they're not going to get any damage on this tower basically. Got like 40 damage on it, yeah. Yeah, barely anything at all. Barely! Hey, High End is going for a solo crest build on this uh, Death Prophet. Uh, if you guys know, extra system does physical damage here, so solo crest will increase their damage with that. And having extra armor against Slardar, there's nothing wrong with that uh, idea. Okay, there we go. Luna had a Dragon Lance queued up, uh, but she's transitioned that quickly over to the. Oh, she's actually going to complete it. She does want to complete it uh, before she goes yeah, for her mantle. It's it's pretty nice. You really. Yeah, you really need four staffs against the team. Four staff is a great item against Life Sealer. Actually, speaking of Life Sealer and uh, Slardar, gets the kill on Luki Luki in the mid lane. That's the first death over. On, actually, not first death. First death since the laning phase, uh, which Luki dominated by trading some of his life away. But... That's how they do. Yeah, Luna actually, she's got the Dragon Lance queued up, but not the Hurricane Pike. So she's gonna go for Manta before the Pike, or maybe you think she'll adjust that? Uh, I think you should. I think you should go for the. Uh... Four staff. Four staff seems very good here, but Luchan getting taken down right now incredibly fast. This is why I love to see Slardar, one of my favorite heroes to play, and you just get Firestorm a big peek Firestorm plus off. Haze? Come on. Yeah, it's, it's easy game. Easy, easy game. But yeah, I mean, um, Manta is not a bad item here either. She can utilize the Manta to take away the course of Haze as well. But I just think four staff is such a good item in this game. It's good against the other lord as well. If you get trapped in the pit, you can force yourself away. You can also use that to save your teammates as well. Uh, good against, uh, good with the Batrider on your team. If Batrider is last away and your life stealer towards you, you can just force staff the Batrider even a little bit more closer to your team. Like, there's so much utility uh, to be had. But Manta, of course, provides you with a lot more damage. So maybe that's what she's looking for as well. So what's McMaster's play here? Like, if, they, if they're out separated too much, the life stealer... Um... The Life Stealer Slardar Bomb is going to come into full effect as they get picked off repeatedly. Uh, they don't want to push. They don't want to counter push because they're going to be fighting into an Aegis. Is it just dodge as much as possible? And no, nope. they want to go for I ganks. Honestly think, I honestly think they can keep going for ganks. I don't think it's a problem for them. Uh, they do have the Aegis, but I don't think Aegis is that big of a deal right now. Um, Life Stealer has the Aegis, um, but Life Stealer can't do too much without the support of his uh, supports. And if they want to find a last so they probably want to uh, get Medusa anyways. Yeah, now they're just going to push them to the bottom. Which they're very happy with. They're trading it for a tier 1 the top. Bringing the team though. Up is going to TP uh, 4 in. They're going to smoke, smoke up. Well. Here it goes, Study. studying. He's going to be right in the front. Oh, they know right where oh, no. high end is. Oh, no. It's going to be oh, the no. first one. Here comes the crush. The haze picking him down entirely. And this is going to be McMaster needing to retreat. They're not careful studying. No, he's never gonna catch this life stealer. But Vinard, there we go. He makes it out. Noise. Noise is gonna get crushed. No, he is not. He makes it out. Just, I think, terrible positioning there by Up. Um, 
there's no reason for him to be that far uh, forward. I mean, I, I mean, I guess he is trying to get the low ground vision there because it was daytime, but uh, you gotta be expecting a smoke play. For a uh, high end, the, the death yeah, prophet. high end. Sorry, not up. It, they're, they're both names are about high places. <laughs> <laughs> Batrider finished up his drums, uh, so it's gonna be even more speedy, boy. Drums, such a good item right now. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And now they're gonna be losing their bottom tower uh, because of that uh, death on the Death Prophet. The uh, Prophet is up. She did not use her Exorcism last time either, so that is still available. Yeah, they've got Medusa here. I think they they still need to keep the pressure up so that the Medusa can't get too big, right? Yeah. Um, even if, if they're team fighting, they're still they're gonna have an advantage in a team fight. Even yeah. I mean the the team fight's the best option they've got, even with uh, Shiniba uh, Shinibaba having a Aegis. Uh, so the so there's gonna be a tier two trade here. Luna is gonna be taking down that uh, tier two in the top. Meanwhile, UBC takes that. But UBC is now transitioning over into high ground. Now, yeah, there needs to be a response here. They're gonna get some damage in, but here comes the. Someone else. Oh, here we go. Luki Luki coming in. He gets Medusa. Medusa's caught up right now. Eclipse pum pummeling out right now, but mostly hitting creeps. They've got the Death Ward as well channeling, but no one really claimed. They're gonna need to kill up before this Dark Rift goes off, and they don't stand a chance. They get coup out of it, but that is gonna be it. Just a slim pick in there. Poor, poor support, coup. The only one going down, but great uh, use of the Dark Rift there. Um, and as we said, um, Ku, of course, uh, kind of the sacrificial lamb there, but Ku is the one that saved Big Bump Theory with the disruption onto the Batrider, preventing her from getting caught too far away. Because if um, that disruption did not come out the time it did, and Batrider was able to get deeper into the base, uh, that would have would have a Maledict into a Death Ward, into everything else, would have died for sure. That is an in interesting thing to mention because uh, Shadow Demon, while not in meta, was the class was one of the classic uh, Batrider counters, yep. and uh, McMaster's picked this Batrider into the Shadow Demon. They knew this was going to be here. Yeah, yeah, it's, this is true. I, I mean, it's also the fact that we haven't seen Shadow Demon in a while either. But McMaster must have thought about it. But but still, Batrider doing incredibly well right now, um, and. Yeah, it, this this matchup gets worse and worse once Shadow Demon starts picking up some items. Once Shadow Demon has a force staff to be able to close the gap, as well. Oh, they actually find the Death Prophet again in the river. Yep, high end. Here they go with that uh, life stealer, <laughs> life stealer slaughter gang. They're putting a lot of damage in, but high end is staying alive for now. Soul Siphon's going out like crazy. Bought the time for her team to get in, but they are not going to be there to rotate at all. Shiny Baba has Aegis is going to expire. And it looks like UBC is going to be pressuring down another tier two. And McMasters, how are they going to respond to this with no death profit? They can't fight right now. I was like, confused for a second there because that Yule on death profit got canceled up. Uh, but it got purged up super fast. I was like wondering who has the purge, and I realized obviously Shadow demonic Demon purge there. from Ku. Yeah. yeah, actually on point with the demonic purge, it's purging with the Yules, making sure she gets no time with that soul siphon. Aegis has been reclaimed. Shinibaba is going to be without that. We see another tier two claim. They're really recovering um, a lot of the the material lead that they lost kind of a little bit early. Now taking the lead even. I wonder if Kuzu will go for AT lens first or four staff first. I think he would love to have both this game, but of course they're quite expensive for a potion. Yeah. Poison 5 when he's buying all the words. The slaughter is pretty greedy, that we pushing for. Yeah, 5 for 5, they're pretty much identical on net worth right now. Uh, poor as hell. Yeah, <laughs> just basically boots. Boots and a wand. That, that's their net worth. Alright, McMasters is now playing, or farming together, which I like. They don't lose any cores and lose more objectives, but of course this is not optimal for their farm, their their economy. Yeah. UBC's and Medusa is of top. course getting big as well. Yes, she is. UBC is positioned up top. They're going to take the final tier two, and there's no response. No. Okay, here we go. Tuki Tuki or Luki Luki is leading up the rear as they as McMaster is going to smoke in. 
There is a blink dagger on Vinar. Studying. Oh no, they're gonna find high end once again. It's caught oh, no. completely away from his team. Vinar, he's channeling up. He's got the epicenter rolling around. Now the death work channeling as well. They've got the the Soge is coming out, doing lots of damage. Both teams taking quite a lot of damage. There we go. The exorcism oh, finally gonna claim the first two victims. Crush on a three buys a little bit of time up. Is channeling up that dark earth once again. They want to get Big Bun Theory out of here, but oh. they don't have the chance. Up goes down. Big Bun goes down. They're gonna turn it around on a studying as well. UBC. This is exactly how McMaster wanted to respond to their last tier two getting claimed. They couldn't give that away for free, and instead they take all five of UBC's heroes. My God, that was just oh, so heartbreaking for UBC. They, that that prophet survived 100 HP and somehow made it to her shrine, get to the shrine, and then start pumping out spirit siphon, and then pop the exorcism, and that's when the fight ended for UBC. That is such a disaster um, there for UBC. They could have got the death prophet. They even had. They couldn't kill her during the crush duration, but they canceled Yules again immediately with a demonic purge. But somehow, somehow, that death prophet survived. I don't think she even got four staffed, but yeah, just did not have enough damage there. And that, I mean, death prophet was in the best possible spot for them to get the kill on there, right? I, I hope yeah. that maybe there's a bit of positioning and she's hanging out in the back, not frontlining as much. Maybe waiting for a burrow strike to come through before she um, gets anywhere near the heroes. But that, yeah, taking the low ground approach there, she was just easily spotted and got the crap beat out of her butts. Oh, of high no, end, studying. Might get jumped on again. Oh. She, she, she smelt it this time. It looked like she was gonna go down too, cause she dro dropped that yeah. crypt swarm into the into the creep camp, and it was immediately clear for the the ganking duo <laughs> that there was the yeah. death, death prophet around. And I mean, she was even standing on top of a ward, so that wasn't even a uh, problem. They had the vision. But like, as you said, the positioning on Death Prophet was probably the worst that could have been. But then again, it's the best if you're baiting with it, which I don't think they were baiting with it. But Death it Prophet is probably baiting. the best hero to lose all the life because she can get all the life back into the fight. You know, if you damage Luna like that at the start of the fight, she probably won't be able to re-engage. But Death Prophet is a completely different story. Unfortunately for McMaster, after that big fight, getting a lot out of it, they don't claim any objectives though, and yeah. UBC is going to respawn and just immediately take the final tier 2, so lots of map pressure coming out, and this isn't a game that McMaster wants to, to be in, in the, at a vision disadvantage, or at least don't yeah. feel like they have good control of the map. It's interesting because McMaster has the net worth right, advantage. Lukey, Lukey. Oh, oh, up is immediately going to drop. Oh, the, nice! Uh, drops the four staffs out and TPs. Lukey Lukey is going to get per, uh, excuse me, disrupted. And that's it. End of gank attempt. Um, whose four staff was that? I think Luki Luki four staffed the underlord away from him. No. It has to. It wasn't Shadow Demon. It's that's the I only option was there. Slardar, I don't think was close enough. It could have been Slardar or Medusa, yeah, but so the only four staff that was near was Luki Luki, oh, right? No. What a <laughs> what a misclick. Yeah, and he, and he says whoops after that as well, and studying says <laughs> well played. I mean, they're on different teams, they can't see it, but... Um, yeah, that was a great disruption again coming up from Ku, saving his Underlord. Um, but yeah, this is the power of having something like a Slaughter. I actually talked to him bot lane, Vinar might get caught here. Oh, actually, it's okay. That Rider, oh my god, he has a Scythe of Vice already. That is gonna be a big thing. Yeah. Oh but, yeah, just, man, just, Luki, just... Luki just dodged studying in Ku. Now it's gonna be a fight in the mid. Luki Luki trying to go out onto Medusa. Medusa gets hexed up. Luki Luki's got the lasso, bringing him down. Here comes the Eclipse. No, they need a bit more damage. Big Bun Theory's still up on the high ground, so Stunning's just gonna come in in the river and crush up on the nice. Now Luke, the Big Bun Theory is gonna use that Stone Gaze. Is it just gonna be a retreat from McMaster? Oh, Big Bun Theory McMaster's dies. Fine for now, Vinar. Here we go. Burrow Strike in. Oh yeah, uh, Big Bun Theory does die. Gets the epicenter out, a little bit of damage. Luki Luki taking a lot of damage in the back, but is that gonna give McMaster the space to get the rest of the people in? Burrow Strike on the three, as well as a coconut, but Stunning jumps in and finds Noise. Noise gets taken down. And Vinar is going to escape for now, but. Uh, three, three and five for one. Yeah, they need to keep this Medusa down. McMaster's just pretty happy with that. It looked like they were gonna get a lot more than they could out of it, but just some awkward positioning where. Uh, 
half the team is on the low ground and the target and Batrider is on the high ground. Oh, but the objective is going over to UBC. As UBC is very good about this. Win or lose, they're the ones taking the objectives. Yeah. Swooshan is going to melt, but Vinar doesn't want to give it away for free. He jumps in. Yeah. Oh. Oh boy. Oh, Vinar, he's oh, nice. going to be able to force that out of the Roche pit. He's distracting the team long enough. None of his team is going to come show up, though. And that will be just a bit of annoyance here. And then giving up his life. Now going to be down for 50 seconds. At least going to be up to 30. I don't know about that, Golgi. Yeah, he thought his team was going to come and help. Yeah, the team wasn't anywhere near. I think he was trying to go for a solo play. Maybe he thought the Roshan was a lot lower because he had no vision of that. Maybe he yeah. thought it was can go for a burst strike and snatch the Aegis. Yeah, they do take uh, it quite quickly. Yeah. He just had to wait for like five more seconds. But Medusa now with the Aegis, of course, one of the best Aegis carriers in the game. So I to kill him twice. Of course, High End actually picked up an Aeon Desk, which is going to solve a lot of his issues right now because he's uh, usually the one to get jumped on by the Slardar. Very happy with that. Uh, how? Where? How? They just uh, oh, look, 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 jumped on by Slardar. The classic. Yeah, and that's all worth a lot of money. 531 gold for that kill still. Oh my god. That's a 1.5k gold swing just for that uh, Batrider kill. That just shows you how ahead that Batrider was. Yeah. And was that that wasn't a kill streak or anything like that, right? Yeah. No. That a couple times. In fact, in the last fight where they got the Medusa. Yeah. And even though they got the Medusa, they actually lost money in that fight. Uh, because Batrider, again, is worth so much money. Now we're pretty much even. Just heading towards UBC, but this could be just another roller coaster. This could be a flat line. Um, Mash yep. is going to need to be here to defend their high ground. That tower is going down quite quickly. Uh, Jimmy Baba, of course, has that Aegis, so they've got to do something quickly. They can't just let this go. They're going to get the elusive beam out onto Medusa. Medusa has the Aegis this time. Is going to be the one up on the high ground. They don't oh, have that right in front high end, Yeah, Jimmy Baba is going to bring in studying high end, taking so much damage. Even the uh, Aether, the disc and this couldn't keep her alive there. Vinar gets turned around. Kids turned around on blown up in the middle of his team. Luna's gonna go down as well. Has my back available. They're using Dark Rift. They got their damage. They got their kills. They got their buybacks and they're just gonna back out. They will lose the life stealer on the way out. No, no barracks claim, but they do get the tier three. Um, look at how just disciplined UBC is here. Yeah, no, that's uh, crazy. That's uh, what three buybacks I think that happened that fight. Oh my god, such a network swing there that's a 3k network swing even even greater than 3.5k network swing over on to uh, over onto ubc and just going in there and then using that um dark rift to a uh, full extent and my god i thought lancaster was gonna get out there alive as well they were so low by the time that channel ended if they if he used that like one second later then he might they might completely wipe but for three buybacks they only get one hero death and they still even lose their tier three anyways now, Medusa still has Aegis, and Death Prophet has no uh, exorcism for 70 seconds. If UBC were to push right now as a team, this mid lane, is there anything that McMasters can do about it? Uh, I mean, uh, Lunar is coming up like in 7, and Batrider is up in 10 as well, so I don't think they can really push in, because Lifestealer doesn't have Bustle Travels or any way to really come back into the fight, and they think I think they still do need the Lifestealer to supplement Medusa's damage. Medusa, not quite that bullet hose yet. No, not just yet. Or that damage hose. But they can still maybe look for a high ground here. Still, now that Life Slayer is up, 45 seconds to run the Exorcism. Maybe they can take a Rax. And they're positioning for it. Yep. Where is Life Slayer? Life is inside studying again. As college kids should be, inside studying. <laughs> I like that, that's good. Again, last time we saw that Aeon disc from high end, which looked really good, but uh, it didn't actually do him any good in the end because he just got blown up as soon as it ended. I think in theory they're just trying to wait it out until they have an exorcism maybe. 
They won't have Eclipse for quite a while. Actually, five seconds, I take it back. Epicenter is up, here it goes, Luke Luke, he's gonna get the lasso out onto Big Bun Theory. Big Bun Theory doesn't have a team behind him, but he doesn't have the Aegis. High end, there we go, now High End's gonna be able to survive this time. Exorcism not used quite yet. Big Bun Theory taking quite a lot of damage, but still no. Aegis gets hopped, he's got a cheese on him. Dark Rift goes up again from up. Now, Luke Luke gonna try and go uh -oh. on him. Oh no, Medusa didn't go with the Dark Rift! This is the worst case scenario, I think. Medusa's gonna oh, get she's, she's, she's the cheese. Oh, she's still trying to fight it? She's not gonna, she's just gonna, I mean, she figured she could maybe get that unexpected kill onto Yike. Will eventually go down, took quite a lot to do, uh, but that's pretty good. Actually, Medusa's not even worth that much? No, it's, it's two each, 270 gold to each hero. So oh, that's, uh, like yeah, that's pretty over good. 1,000. Uh, 2,500 gold swing this time around now, just 2K in favor of UBC once that updates. It's gonna be just, we're getting real wiggly with this net worth chart. It's yeah. back and forth, back and forth. That big bun theory, I mean, after with all those heroes there, she actually had down to like siege creep or something, because uh, the only reason it gets split up like that means uh, one, no, none of the heroes actually got the last hit on her. But now, I mean, uh, sharing is caring, so everyone gets fed equally. Although I think they would have loved to have that kill on Luna or someone that could use that money better. But yeah, that Aegis uh, respawn time just was a little bit too long um, for up Dark Rift to catch him. He, it seemed like it was timed exceptionally well. It was just yeah. like a fraction, like maybe two oh, they find the... of a second too late. Yeah, they're gonna find Noise. Oh, they're gonna find a fight. UBC and Big Master smashing up right now. The Death Ward is just channeling away. Shinibaba is gonna have to head over to the shrine and heal up. Ku is gonna pop next. Now they're chasing down Shinibaba. They don't have the lasso for another 44 seconds, but they've got the burrow strike. And Malice is gonna buy him a little bit of time as everyone gets caught on the edge of it. But they've got the coconut here. They are getting Life Stealer. Life Stealer is gonna get caught in the rest of the players. Here comes the epicenter, channeling up onto everyone on UBC. That's gonna be a buyback even used on uh, on Slardar. On studying. Life Stealer managed to rage TP away from that at the very least. But yeah, this game so swinging right now. McMaster now in the driver's seat of this game. They're going to be taking this gold lead towards them now. Look at this crazy yeah. stuff. Exorcism going to be ending in about five seconds here. Underlord by the oh, that's great. Another buyback. Yeah, that's great. Exorcism was almost done. It's, yeah, it's I don't finishing think, now. Yeah, I don't think they could have pushed on long, much longer anyway. So I think McMaster is super happy with the buyback. They're stoked. They went from 2k tower to 3k buyback to 4k in the lead now. It's the most it's ever been in the favor of McMaster. Yeah. Solo Crest finally finished up for that Death Prophet. That additional dodge chance is going to do wonders for her. Yeah, that will help keep her alive. Considering the main thing really blowing her up is going to be that, uh, that nice Slardar start. taxi, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so surprised how little this uh, Aeon Disk has done. It's it. You forget she has it, right? Yeah, like she dies so fast anyways. I mean, uh, imagine I she didn't have it. I haven't been catching if um, if Shadow Demon's near, but he can just purge it, right? Mm, I don't think it's purgeable. Damage 2.5 seconds buff that causes all damage deal to be... Um, yeah, it doesn't. I it doesn't know. state on items. I'm. Pr I want to say it's purgeable. That would be so bad if it is, <laughs> and that would be so so sick of Ku to be able to like purge it immediately as it comes up. But like, no, I would. I would. I would buy, I almost buy it because uh, she goes on so fast. Maybe that's. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's getting purged off. But like, no, that would be so sad if they can purge. No way. That's an expensive item. There's no way it can be purged. It's like. You, it's like. It's like you can't purge off BKB and stuff. You know. Yeah, it doesn't specifically state anything about it. I think, yeah, I think uh, I'll, I'll be in chat, the check now. that for me? Yeah, hopefully they can uh, give us the answer for yeah, that. Or well, we can check it in the Dota wiki, like, uh, between games as well. I didn't, I just checked on the Dota wiki for the item listing. You know, what are you doing, buddy? Well, I guess just being ballsy. Show lose, <laughs> boss. It's getting bored. Uh, this Roshan respawn actually a little short here. I think it was just a minute long, so uh, going to be coming up in seven. This is going to be the refresher shard, and I think with disasters to let UBC take this again, uh, having a double stone gaze would be almost impossible for McMaster to fight against. But having a double lasso, however, is going to be game winning. 
I just want to say regarding the Aeon Desk, if we're wrong, I don't think we have to ask. Twitch chat will happily correct you. <laughs> or me. Oh, here we go. Slardar with Lifesteal inside is going to get caught. Oh, no. They've got, the, they've got everything funneling out onto it right now. Hyatt drops the exorcism now. UBC, they're going to clash once again. Noise has got the death channel. The death more channeling up. Tons of damage. Death Prophet is going to be the first one to fall on the McMaster side. McMaster now on the retreat. They've used the Eclipse. They didn't catch any major targets. Luki Luki gets taken down by Sh uh, Shini Baba. And this looks really bad for McMaster. Yikes, trying to make his way away, but another pit of malice is going to keep them in place for now. Yikes, oh, trying to run, gets caught in the pit, right in the face of a crush. There we go, they're going to have to buy back uh, Luki Luki just to make sure that they have someone up that could repel a high ground push. That went all the way bad. What happened there, Golgi? I don't know. I mean, I feel like, I mean, maybe that lasso was a little bit too early. Um, he lassoed in there, which, you know... Um, that left sealer is staying inside of that uh, slaughter, it's nice and safe um, until the last one comes down. Once the last one comes down, Shinibaba knows he's safe, so he can come out and start doing damage. And Shinibaba, I think, just completely rolled through all of them, and Yanks just couldn't get the damage done because obviously you have a, you know, a piped up Underlord with oh. a life sealer who's magic immune. Minar, no! He's trying to go on a studying. This guy is much bigger than you. He's going to be fine. They both have blinks, though. Ooh, studying. Minar reveals himself again, but this is a bait. Yeah, so Luki Luki's for it. here. Here we go, Burrow Strike. Oh, this... oh! The Burrow Strike goes through, but doesn't get the, get the stun on the Slardar. Slardar is inside the trees right now, taking a lot of damage. His Blink will be up in one second, as long as he doesn't take any damage. No! They're gonna have noise here. The whole McMaster he the river. showing up. He gets to the river, but it's not enough. The Maledict will tick him down. At least he dies in his home. But UBC, you know what they like? Space. You know what they do with space? They take Roche. Oh no, McMaster's gotta go there ASAP. Oh no, they don't even know what's going on. Luna's still taking creeps in the jungle. Oh no, this is going to be a double stone gaze. Can you tell me how Luki Luki's there? Luki, Come on, yeah, he's dying back if he dies. Hit, he absolutely dies back. They know that it's going on. Can the rest of them do it? Roche is gonna go down any second. The Pit of Malice should be expiring soon. Roshan goes down. They don't have a response. They get the Aegis, they get the cheese, they get the refresher shard. Now McMaster needs to get into their base and get out of here. They might be sacrificing Vinar's life just to make sure they get everyone else to their base. And this is the part where McMaster is going to have an exceptionally tough hold here. Yeah, uh, Sun King is forced to buy back, but of course Batrider has already buy, uh, bought back, so we're not going to be seeing him for another 70 seconds. This Rax can basically say goodbye to here unless there's some kind of miracle coming yeah, out. With here. another exposed lane. Uh, Firestorm, just keeping them out. Not quite doing the damage to the towers yet, but will very soon. It doesn't matter. Refresher because... Shard is on Medusa, by the way. Yeah, as well. double Stone Gaze. This is this is gonna be an issue. They shrine up the melee. We'll be able to Dark Rift out of there. One and a half sets, just the range here in the bottom, but UBC, once again, this is discipline. They're not taking anything yep. they don't absolutely have to. It feels That's like That's a one and a half sets without losing any of their Roshan, uh, Rosh Roshan uh, resources either. They actually give the Refresher Shard over to Shadow Demon. These purges have been coming in hot, 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 I think. Uh, chat yeah. says that, that Aeon Disc is in fact Dispellable. Dispellable. Wow. Or you cannot use. You can't use. Uh, I don't know. I thought that's what I. Oh, Yule Scepter is purgeable. Yeah, we knew that. Uh, and disc. We you gotta scroll up, I think, to see the answer. Yeah, I mean, scroll guys, up, we, we, we we've been talking that Yule's having getting, getting purged off since she got it. I think someone we're might have asked the question in chat, though, so I don't. No, I think someone had asked that in chat, so they were just responding to that person. I won't. Oh. I'm not gonna crap on it. Thank you for your help, to viewers in the chat, helping anyone who's new to Dota learn a little bit about some things. Stunning is gonna jump in, blink right on the Luna. Luna gets blown up. No buyback. 90 seconds. This is gonna be GG for McMasters unless they can pull off a miracle. UBC knows it. They're just gonna go straight for the tier fours. 
dropping some firestorms onto Lukey Lukey. And the rest of the team, are they here studying jumps in the back line? Once again, is getting crushes. And UBC is just flexing on McMaster right now, trying to pin him back into their base. Medusa gets lassoed, but she's got herself plenty. Oh, Cole gets in. He Cole's got a blink. So he's going to be there with the disruption pretty easily. Now he's already refreshed up and ready to use another disruption just in case. Doesn't need it. There we go. McMaster calls the good game. Well played. Game number one is going to go to UBC, and it feels like they had their hand on the steering wheel this entire time, Goldie. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, McMaster had moments when they're doing 